Hi everyone, I'm Matias Kerr from Universidad de los Andes in Chile. It's an honor to be here today with you in this World Lumen Conference 2021. My presentation will be about new forms of totalitarianism from surveillance capitalism to transhumanism. Totalitarianism are a specific political phenomenon of the 20th century characterized by the absolute control of the entire society by the state and the single party through terror. Totalitarianisms seem to have quickly disappeared, at least the two most important ones, Hitler's Nazi Germany and the Stalinist period of the communist USSR. However, as Chantal del Sol has well identified, some of its foundations the mass man cap capable of being perfected and anthropological objectives such as the creation of the new man and the perfect new society still persist. In this sense, we can affirm that today in the 21st century, within the post totalitarian and postmodern period, we are faced with new threats of dominance over the human being and society. On this occasion, that domination would be not through terror, which means a fundamental difference with respect to 20, uh, 21st, uh, 20th century totalitarianism, or at least it does not seem to be the most li likely path so far. In the same way, instead of the state party set, today the dom domain or the domination would be in a strange combination between the state and some large technological companies, both ICT companies and biotechnological companies. So first of all, I want to talk to you about the surveillance, ICTs and surveillance capitalism, the form of control over society in this 21st century. First of all, I want to address the dangers that currently exist regarding the control of the population or the people, or the society, by ICTs. Although ICTs are a set of technologies that do not, do not specifically seek to control society, they, by their very nature, they can allow an important dom uh, dominion over people. This may happen in at least two different ways. First of all, by monitoring or surveilling what people say, do, think, or buy. Uh, these activities uh, can be mo uh, monitored, controlled, or surveilled through social networks, online shopping pages, uh, and other uh, mass media uh, apps, or websites or, or platforms. Also, the second problem would be that uh, the use of propaganda and manipulation of the information, like fake news, um, that each person could receive in a society through these apps, these websites, these different uh, ICTs. Um, and this could be uh, the starting point and could be the pr profiling of each person through the information that uh, they gather. And then the second part would be generating um, new information or specific information targeted to different people or different sets of people uh, regarding their preferences and what uh, these companies and the state knows about each person. The first point has to do, therefore, with the ab ability of large technological companies, such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, or Apple, to know what we like, what we think, what we say, what we want to buy, our beliefs, our life milestones, and other data of great importance. If this information is also shared with governments and their intelligent, intelligence agencies, then the problem may be even greater, since there in, in that case, do, there will be a combination between the surveillance of big tech and the monopoly of the use of force or power, uh, typical of the modern state. This is, of course, a fertile field um, there to subject people to terrible control. Um, and this uh, appears to be, we don't know for certain, um, maybe the case in China with the social credit system uh, and the minority of the U Uyghur people. Um, and the second point, the one of manipulation through fake news, um, has the starting point through this surveillance, as I, as I told you, but it goes a step further. It consists in the manipulation of the information to deceive and control public opinion. In this sense, the phenomenon 
of fake news is only one example of what we of what can happen or, or could happen if we apply the surveillance capitalism system to the fields of politics as cambridge analytica did the problem problem can be enormous since it, it ends is it it, it sends up sorry since this in this case the the, the the final product is that we end up reinforcing our preconceptions and the information that each person wants to hear um, in order to maintain or stay in their political opinions or positions instead of um, hindering or promoting dialogue, which is, of course, one of the main um, foundations of our representative and deliberative Western democratic system. In this way, the surveillance capitalism system based on data collection through ICTs can put democracy at risk and fit authoritarianism or even totalitarian phenomena. Second of all, transhumanism and the NBICs uh, or nanotechnologies, biotechnologies control um, in this case would be over the human being in the 21st uh, century. So first of all, transhuman transhumanism. We know transhumanism is a project that's, that seeks to improve the human being um, condition and even eventually transcend the human condition towards a new way of life, which would be transhuman or post-human. Um, it includes a series of applications of biotechnology and nanotechnology that can pose a significant problem for people's privacy. Although transhumanism is a complex phenomenon that requires a deep analysis in, analysis in terms of their its philosophical and anthropological foundations and it, its ethical and political consequences, at this moment, I want to focus only on the concrete risk that nanotechnologies with biotechnologies um, and big pharma and other industries and, and technologies pose to democracy and the lives, lives of each person in their privacy and freedom. One of the most important steps of transhumanism is the supposed improvement of people's health through the use of devices or gadgets that allow us to control our organs or the human body or our vital signs, sleep, um, process, etc. Although these devices and gadgets can effectively contribute to a better care of our body, the data that they collect can also allow excessive surveillance by those who have access to this information. If today Google can know how I, how much I slept and, um, and what my dream was like, my dream process, not the dream itself, what can prevent that information from being used against me tomorrow? And the second step within this transhumanist project is the improvement of the human being. In that sense, genetic engineering, neuroscience and biotechnology have a, a lot to say since they are based on the possibility of eliminating certain diseases, as well as increasing the capacities of human being in different physical and cognitive aspects. From this per perspective, um, the risk seems even greater. If certain people, our parents, or organizations such as the state or others, maybe private companies even, uh, can decide what the new people will be like, um, they will be subjecting them this new generation of persons to an excessive control, which is even a, a control over the basic and original conditions of their existence um, or, or the existence of, the, of these new people that would come. Thus, the state or the private sector could effectively clear the new man that the totalitarianisms of the 20th century promised. So in the case of transhumanism, we'll, we would have also the, the possibility of a strong surveillance and also the possibility of manipulation, control, domination, uh, but it's, it would be more profound in each person even. So we have sort of the same problems of surveillance and control in both uh, ICTs, surveillance capitalism through society on, or on society, and also in, uh, through transhumanism, uh, through biotechnology, nanotechnology, and, and genetic engineering, uh, control and um, surveillance and manipulation or control over the human body and each person in concrete. Finally, in a sort of conclusion, 
I want to admit that perhaps the idea that surveillance capitalism and transhumanism can become new forms of totalitarianism is an exaggerated rhetorical device. This is because none of them seek, control, uh, seek concentrated power uh, um, or, are, or want to uh, have this power through terror. And these two traits are inherent in the nature of the totalitarianisms as a political phenomenon, such as described by Hannah Arendt um, last century. However, the similarities that we have expressed are enough to draw our attention to the risks to which societies and individuals are exposed in this our 21st century. We must therefore reflect on the ends and means of these technologies and their companies and groups, even the state, that promote them in order to generate a broad and democratic debate that allows, allows us to make the best decisions in order to safeguard our democracy and the dignity of each per person within them. Thank you very much.